This is the latest prototype of a combined linear and rotary actuator that I talked about in my last video on the CNC scroll saw project. So if you haven't seen that, you can go check that out now for the application of this actuator. But in this video, I'll just go over the actuator itself because I think it could be generally useful for other applications as well. So the unique thing going on here is that the silver is that the aluminum square tube that has the blue tape on it here moves up and down in a linear fashion and is free to rotate along itself and those two actions can be combined. And then here, since I need fast reciprocating motion, I have it being driven by a crank arm slider, but in other applications you could drive the linear movement with a normal uh, belt driven carriage or screw driven carriage. So really the two most important parts of an actuator like this is that you need to push and pull on the square tube while also rotating. So that's accomplished by a bearing that sits up there and so as you you're free to rotate along the inner race and we push and pull on the outer race. This is probably not the best thing in the world because what you're really doing is pulling and pushing on the internal ball bearings there and I'm not sure what the real force because those bearings aren't rated for thrust loads like that uh, in my case the forces I think will be fairly low so I don't think it'll be too much of an issue but I'm curious if there are a more suitable type of bearing or anything else that you can have thrust loads back and forth. I couldn't come up with a way to use a regular thrust bearing because they, those want to separate into two pieces. So if you know, make sure to leave a comment below. And then the other piece is the torque transmitting piece right here, which is an assembly of four ball bearings that are set to rotate along the inner race of this large inner bearing there. And the bearings let the tube move in and out, but when connected to a pulley in here, you could drive the rotation of this axis. Originally, I hadn't intended to use linear rods like this and in this picture you can see I used to have bearings on both sides of this main large bearing and I was thinking that would constrain the linear movement and you wouldn't have to have any extra rods like this. But in actuality the radial play on a large bearing like this is enough that there's too much slop and the linear movement is free to wiggle around and that's compounded by that this top bearing has a similar amount of radial play and so it is allowed to move around. So the two linear rods here just constrain it and I did have a version with one but there's a torque moment that wants to push that rod away and so using two also balances the force that's applied slightly off axis here and keeps the whole thing moving pretty good. And I, on the other side here, there's an extra bracket that sticks off if I needed to hold more securely on that other part if this wanted to move up and down, but it's stiff enough for the current application right now. Here on the actual crank part, each half has a radial bearing 
and then a thrust bearing between them. I need to reprint these parts so that the thrust thrust bearing is actually held um, in place. Right now they just kind of wiggle around, but uh, it still works pretty well. So let me hook this up to a drill really quick and we can see it moving faster. Whoa! <laughs> Did not intend for that to happen. Hmm, so I'll have to think about how that happened and ways to prevent that in the future. But that was probably going faster than I will ever need to go. Um, but that is a good, good test to have happen. And so one last thing I need to explore, and I'll probably do that once I have this more assembled into its final application, is a counterbalance system. Because you saw in those, in that testing at higher speeds, the whole thing really wants to shake back and forth. Even though the moving mass here is only about 150 grams, which compared to the one kilo that I was trying to move before is... A great reduction. Uh, that being said, I will have two of these uh, opposing each other. One on this side, the blade will go here, and then there will be another one that moves in sync with it. And so that's about 300 grams moving, more or less. So we're still three times lighter, but since we'll be going faster, we still need to. Uh, dampen that vibration probably by moving the same amount of mass in the opposite direction and probably doing that uh, over on this end of the actuator so that the moments balance out and the whole thing doesn't want to um, torque back and forth still and I'm gonna have to figure that out once I get the whole thing assembled because the C arm is going to go here and so I'm going to have to figure out where I actually have room plus there's going to be this pulley a connecting shaft there's going to be a pulley here and a big connecting pulley and then the motors have got to mount somewhere so I got a bunch more things to figure out and make sure to subscribe so that you can see uh, the progress of the CNC scroll saw okay bye